Good afternoon. Uh, today, I will discuss like uh, the subject code is AP00001, block 1, unit 1, that is operation research. The unit 1, we have operation research, we will discuss about an overview. What exactly operation research is, what contents coming under this. Then slowly we will go ahead, uh, I mean as per the syllabus, uh, what content it is. We will go by model 1, I mean unit 1, then unit 2, unit 3 will cover it. So as you know, this is such a subject where it has many more applications. Everywhere, you know, uh, not a single area, so everywhere it has a, I mean it is widely used. Uh, but the names are different, you know, uh, the talk about office shots in different sector or in different subject, sometimes it is considered optimization technique. If you see the history of this operation research, during Second World War, I mean World War II, during 1939-45, the term came into existence in the form of military contest. When uh, different country, they have some less military forces, their objective was how to defeat others. Then they thought of to have some technique, but the concept came to their mind that will go for this like use of use of this military process in optimum ways. Then slowly this concept came into different IITs, different IIMs, and different universities by different names as the operations. The different people that are accepting different ways. The content remains the same. Let us have an overview of this subject. Uh, let me tell you this operation research is purely I mean, applied mathematics. It has, a, as I said just before, it is widely used. So that is why, you know, uh, more mathematical things are not there, but it has a applied way it is used. Like you see, sometimes it is referred as a management science or decision science. Why this decision science? Now, this is such a subject where the decision maker wants to take a decision, where he is having different alternatives. So out of the alternative, he is finding it out which one is best alternatives. I mean, he is taking a decision by which he can get the solution of his problems. So, you can define this term in different ways, like it is defined it is a subject which deals with art of making good decisions under specified constraint. Because when we are taking a decision, we will have uh, many more constraints or we will face many more constraints. So taking all this constraint, you have to take easy decisions. And this is such a thing where it can be used in real life situations, it can be used in I don't know, complex situations. In daily life also, sometimes knowing or unknowingly the concept is used. Thus, the topic of making a decision is both integrating and relevant. So most people consider operation as a soft kind of mathematics, as I said before, it is purely applied mathematics. No exactly pure mathematics things are not there. Because people can understand what they are doing, what they are using it, or how they are using it. So, there are two different, I mean, two important keys to make a good decisions. Always you need a good information. And this is skill. The, you know, the decision maker, if there is doesn't have the skill, then he cannot use this, you know, already in the right way. So for this, there is a requirement of skill of the decision maker. No information required, but without skill, you cannot use it. So, by good information, what does it mean? It means that there are all essential factors to capture. The different tools that exist. You know, I mean, application of appropriate solution to different problems. As you say, as I said, there are many more situations to come, real life situations to come, where this operation should help you. So it covers. Both of the acquiring of good information, as I said, and the skill of making good decision. Now let us have a history of this office research. As I said, this concept came into existence during the year 1940. I mean, during World War II, a team of scientists, Black Eight Parkers in UK applied this technique to research military operations to win the war and the techniques thus developed within the office research. So it is an analytical method of problem solving and decision making. You know? 
when the uh, problem comes to you, first of all, go for analyzing it. Because when the data coming in the theories, first of all, you have to convert to a model. Only when making a model, then you cannot solve it. So this OR concept will help you how to convert this you know, the problem coming on a, I mean coming towards you, how to convert to mathematical form. Right? I'll tell you, I mean next class, I'll tell you how to in LPP, there is one chapter in OR, one of the important chapters that is the linear program problem, I'll tell you how to convert this theoretical things into mathematical form or mathematical model. Because if you are able to convert to mathematical model, then suddenly you will have the solutions. So the, the opposite research can be broken down into basic component and then solve in different state by mathematical analysis. Then we have discussed about process OR. It is having different process, then how to do it step by step. What should be the first step when the problem comes to you? What is the first step? The first step is you identify the problems, which needs to be solved. Because unless you are identifying the problem, how we can solve it? Let us first identify this. Then as I said this before, once you identify the problem, then this problem has to be converted into a model. Uh, which resembles the real world and variables. And using this model, you can have a solutions, you can derive solutions. Because once you form a model, linking to this model, you have a many more ways to solve it. Sometimes you have a software, sometimes manual you can do. So once you derive the solution, then the solution has to be tested. I mean, has to be tested. Now, unless you test it, then how you can implement it? So once you get a solution of your problems, then you go for testing it. Once you get success, then that directly be implementing the actual problems. Coming to characteristics of our research, there are three primary characteristics of all our research they put on the optimization, simulation, probability and statistics. As I said before, optimization always talks about two things either to maximize or to minimize. Then the question comes to your mind, where to maximize, where to minimize. Maximize always focuses on if you involve with the production. I give this example by which you can understand better. They are involved with production. So always what do you think? How it can be maximized? Let me think about a profit. So what do you think? How it can be maximized? Let me think about the sales. Let me think about revenue. Etc. These are the things where you can maximize the units. To talk about minimization, like the term we are using cost, expenditure, or time. So always will be trying to how giving minimal effort, how to achieve more, how to giving you no know, less duration, how to achieve more, giving using less cost, how to achieve more benefit, or having less expenditure, how to get more benefit. So as I said, optimization says about two things: either to maximize or to minimize, depend on the circumstances. What the circumstances demand? The second comes simulation. Simulation, you know, is such a concept where uh, we focus on random numbers and simulation is such a concept where you are able to have a model. Once you have a model, then you are finding the solutions. By the help of random numbers, then you are able to apply it. Because simulation, the part of the OR, let me tell you, under OR, we are coming across many more chapters like linear programming, nonlinear programming, integer programming. Your dynamic programming, simulation, Markov process, decision theory, etc. Many more things are there. It is one of the broad concepts, right? But as for the requirement for adopting it and the different state government, they are also focusing on this war portions because uh, always the mathematician, the scientist, they focus on uh, no, this concept because it has been widely used. Now coming to third one, one of the other characteristics which is provided in statistics. As you know, provided such a concept where uh, always you believe on event. Without event, probability has no use. What it says about the chance of happening or not happening. Right? So, and basically this provided you talk about, you simulation talk about, or you talk about any more methods which comes under OR, all are you are using for forecasting. Right? 
may be present or may be for future. When you are talking about the present or future, then statistics come into existence. Statistics is purely based on data. Without data, statistics has no use. So again, in statistics also, the concept statistics are probability. Both you are using for forecasting, but both are based on data. For the probabilities, always you have some probability values. In statistics, you have all these previous records or previous data by which you can think of about future. So this includes this mathematical algorithm. So there is a number of algorithms, step by step, which will involve uh, the data to uncover helpful insight and reasons why this was provided is there. But the provided is there is there always. But by that you can have a better forecast for the future. You can have a reliable prediction and you can have a possible solution. As I said before, the slide when once you get solution that has to be tested. Once you test it, then you can go for implementing it. Now coming to the next one, importance of appreciations. What is it called? Why it is it? What is the importance of this? The field of appreciations provides a more powerful approach to decision making than ordinary software and data analytic tools. As you know, we have many more data analytic tools. We have many more softwares. But this is one of the area where you know, one of, you know, having a more powerful approach to our decision making. When you take any decisions, let me one example let me give on decision theory part or decision analysis when the decision maker takes a decision this purely depends on event or that is called states of nature which I'll tell you maybe in future uh, maybe in other slides always the decision maker while taking or choosing the alternative courses of action always depends on states of nature or events so employing Operations professional can help companies achieve more complete data set. As I said, the main focus of different state government or central government always about operations concept. So they are recruiting more professionals in these areas. Uh, they can help the companies to achieve more complete data set. Consider all available options. As I said just before, when decision maker taking decisions, he should know what are the options available with him or available with her. Unless he is knowing us, he is knowing the alternatives, how he can take decisions. And by this also, he can predict about future outcomes. And he can estimate the risk. What is the use of this? Because when you are forecasting the outcomes, there is a, you know, exact value, there is a forecast value. You can have the gap. By this also, you can know what is the error happening or the error you are going to face. As I said just before, by characteristics, the probability also coming under this probability has always risk because the chance of happening or not happening is there. That is the Appreciation can be tailored to specific business process and use cases to determine which techniques are most appropriate to solve the problems. Because under this, as I said, many more techniques are there. We have to find out for your particular problem which technique is suitable. Once you able to identify as per the data available, then probably it can be used and you can have the solutions. Now coming to uses of operation research. Operation research can be applied in variety cases including scheduling, time management. Because there is a concept like this in LPP, I will tell you maybe one class after or maybe one two class after. Uh, there is a concept which is called you know, uh, routine. Then uh, one concept is transportation problem, mass element problems. There is a concept of scheduling. When he talks about what should be the input time, what should be the output time, what should be the total lapse times. So the use of this, the use of proper research in variety cases, you can use in scheduling. What scheduling like? You will be trying how the less duration your processing should be completed. The total elapse time. Total elapse time means the time gap between starting time to ending time is equal to time lapse times. That should be minimum. And this surplus research will give ideas. And by this also, you can able to manage your time. Let you have a less time, less duration, how to have more output or achieve this output with less duration, this surplus research will tell you. And if you talk about agriculture, planning, you talk about urban road, maybe road, it may be anything. Any type of planning you talk about, then always one will help you. 
as you know we have reached to more, more than 130 crore populations 132 crore populations we able to manage our food how and this appreciation is there behind if you see the behind appreciation is only there because by this technique you able to you know, manage the less land you know, as you know day by day we are using our land for uh, constructions if you are able to you know if you are doing this then how you are sustaining with less land by the help of optimization able to minimize you know able to use this less land but getting more output now only by this optimization technique talk about road we are going for different way you know road planning transportations to our part of this over one part of the lpp i'll tell you in the future linear program problems which comes under our we are able to have a plan the talk about road plan you talk about hospital plan you talk about anything all the plan always you believe on or you Focusation for concept, optimizing concept. There is another no, uh, cases like ERP, the database or enterprise resource planning. Also, same operation research is used. We talk about supply chain management, just for I was saying, right? Like from where you can have the raw material from the source, then how it comes to manufacturing unit, how it can come to you know wholesaler, retailer. I mean, uh, distributor, wholesaler, distributor, retailers, then customers. Whole chain system is, you know, compiling by your office systems. And then some software that will help you. Then talk about inventory management. That is another concept. Here is one part of the, or uh, the application of one is there in the inventory management. When anything you have kept in the stock, or you talk about warehouse, or you talk about storage facilities, how you able to manage your inventories? As you know, in inventory control technique, if you talk about, we have many more techniques, Shavish analysis, you talk about uh, MRP, material requirement planning, you talk about EOQ, economic order quantities, you talk about economic batch, economic batch quantities. So many more techniques are there where this OR concept is used. But for example, one is EOQ, economic order quantity, I am giving one example, you can understand better. How this OR concept is used, let me tell you. Because economic order quantities, Quantity means the quantity you are asking, whether you talk about raw material, you talk about anything. When the quantity you are asking, that should be economic. Means what? You should not ask more, you should not ask less. Less create problems, more also create problems. Surplus is always losses, less is always create the less profit. But the OR will help you how to optimize it. How to or how much to ask to I mean, made not deficiency, not surplus. Another inventory management, we have many more things are there like economic order, you know, like that is one is called, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the level is reorder level, a reorder point, but the order again further has to be asked. Uh, one is lead time. Right. Everything is manipulated by this work concept. Late time is all known that is called the time gap between the asking order and receiving order. Receiving the same, that is called lead time, the time gap. Now coming to thought, next one, network optimization and engineering. We have uh, some you know, network techniques. Why also this work concept used? Like one is called CPM, critical path method. One is PRT, project evaluation review technique. One is GRT, graphic, eval graphic evaluation review technique. In all these techniques, again, this concept is used. But this concept is PM talk about, you talk about what, you talk about GRT. Now, CKM is such a technique where you are able to find out which path has to be followed for the maximum duration to be taken. Because always you are keeping max duration in hand. Because any tax or any assignment come to you, so you cannot always say less durations. Always you are keeping in hand with max durations. But you go for crossing the project cross of a project, then we will be trying, if it is optimal crossing, how with the less duration, with the less cost, the project will come out. So there are the concepts called PRT, project evaluation review technique, where you are considering optimistic time, your specific time, your most likely time, and where you are finding expected durations of the project, you are finding like uh, a variance of the, how much you can, fluctuate you can, you know, you can, Consider you can capable. Uh, sometimes you can tolerate. You can talk about 
we can tolerate that so they are in a work mode the routing i was just saying before routing routing means the way if you go for transportations always you will be finding out how they you are finding shortcut way but the routing concept says find out the ways where you can cover all the destinations starting you are starting your or uh, journey from the origin you are covering all the destinations but without covering you know without covering if you are coming to origin in the hoyes this work concept help you how to start your journey from the one origin and covering all the destinations again you have to come back to your original place then got a risk management we do have you know, like uh, many more uh, let we have as raw material more raw materials let you have as less raw material but let by default come more raw materials then how to manage it in inventory let you know suddenly uh, let in future uh, you are running with the winter season uh, you require you know, more in uh, summer season any raw material you talk about any finished product you talk about right suddenly let Uh, maybe during summer rain happens then how to avoid this risk this should one help you we will come across different examples by which you can understand how this one is applied to manage risk to manage the uh, to you know less expenditure or to have more benefit more revenue more sales we'll see one by one the coming to models let us have some less model i have uh, soon in the slides like Two different maps, two different balance sheet, port network. Just for us talking about break even point or break even equations. Again, I was talking about inventory management. One of the technique, economical quantities, market analysis. Why you would have initial condition or initial states. Then we have a probability matrix, probability matrix. You no, know. by using this, we can have forecasting about futures. What will be the future forecast in long run? Or in a steady state of equilibrium, right? That can be also forecasted through oppositions. Then coming to queuing model, you know, the queuing model means what? Always we have it, you know, to have the services from the server. You are adapting this technique, queuing theory or queuing model. Where we have a many more factors are there. We have a different ways of having, you know, different uh, channels. to have the service holders there like one is we talk about different technique one is pipo fast in fast out last in fast out fast in last out flow one is zero service in random order so many more techniques are there so as by the requirement we are adapting it but basically if you talk about pipo that is highly used fast in fast out who come fast we getting service fast or you know we will be getting uh, service by the server fast they will go out Then coming to scope, it has a widely scope, as I said, widely scope. Uh, in recent years, our research development or has entered successfully in different areas of research. We we'll take one example, agriculture. Let like you have a less land, you have a less fertilizer, you have less pesticide, you have everything is less. But you want to achieve more output. Even also the manpower, because if we talk about the factors, the variables of this agricultural production, then these are the factors. Because the objective is to have more output, but with using less resources. What are the resources? One is the main independent variable. The main is seeds. Because without seeds, you cannot have the outputs. So using less seeds. you are taking the help of weather condition like sunlight or water facilities then land fertility of the land is required then pesticide is required the fertilizer is required these are the independent variables these are the things required to achieve more outputs so the question is how to achieve more output using all these resources but with a minimum resources taking maximum resources getting more output no meaning You cannot say the optimization. Optimization, optimization always says how to achieve more output with the use of less resources. 
Let us say this. Uh, if you talk about population, as you know, the day to day population is increasing. There is shortage of food. How you are, you know, uh, with all these difficulties, how you able to uh, recover from this? I mean, how you able to sustain? Like a optimization concept is used. And the optimum allocation of land to a variety of crops as per the climatic conditions. As I said, climate conditions are one of the factors. This directly affect to your output. And the coming to the next one, optimum distribution of water from numerous sources like canal for irrigation purposes. So the water facilities, you know, uh, basically in the top of rainy season, we have a sufficient water facilities. But in other uh, seasons like <coughs> we talk about winter season or we talk about just a minute. Sorry. <coughs> so the optimum distribution of water from numerous sources like canal or use purposes. So we are looking where the water is to be there. Whether it's from directly water from the rain or maybe other sources like canal or maybe you are sometimes you know you are blocking the uh, the way of the river and from that we are able to use the water for our agriculture productions. So the main objective is how to achieve more output using all the resources but with less resources or the available resources because you cannot have maximum resources because the resources are time to time decreasing. You talk about finance, you talk about industry, you talk about marketing, you talk about personal management, you talk about products industries, like one example of new products industries. There always is one concept used for activities. But the formula always says about total output, the ratio of total output to the total input. But the question always is how the productivity can be decreased. Now the productivity can be increased when the numerator will be higher, denominator will be lesser. The total output to the total input. So there are different ways are there by which the productivity can be increased. What the operation says, optimization says, optimization says, giving less input, try to decrease your input, achieve the same output by the ratio increases, or else uh, keeping the same input, try to achieve more output, or else both you change. The proportionate change of output should be more than the proportionate change in input. I have told you three ways, but there are many more ways where the productivity can be increased. Because always the production industry says how to achieve more output. Let one product you are manufacturing or you are producing where the demand is so high. And you have to meet the need of the market, need of the demand. <coughs> where you have a less raw material, but there is demand is high. So always you are trying to find out supplier, more supplier. Because unless you have more supplier, you cannot achieve the need of the demand. So there is a requirement of finding the suitable supplier with reasonable price, quality raw material, right? having proper dimensions as per the process of the technology you have adopted. Uh, then finally we will see, we'll see how the output will be more. Find out the proper process, proper machineries where which can be more outputs. Talk about personal management, HR people also they are using it. So see I have some different areas. One is finance area, one of the areas finance, one is the industry, the marketing, personal management which talks about HR, production, everywhere the concept of one is used. Because in marketing people they always want, the, always the head of the organization wants to the less marketing people how to market his product in different areas, in all the areas. Sometimes it is allocating to the market one of sales, I mean marketing people, two, three districts at a time. Two, three districts at a time. What happened here? So he is allocating, as by the efficiency of the marketing people in different areas, 
to market to marketize his product to sell about his product i mean the information should reach to the customers why do they start purchase the product and who will give ideas the who will give ideas we talk about hr also the hr people at the authority of the nations always the finding how the less employees to achieve more output products people they wanting how the less machinery is how to achieve more outputs they are looking their capacity of the machines they are looking the capacity of the employees they are optimally they are using both the capacity of the machinery is both the capacity of the i mean the machinery as well as human being or man or it about employees to achieve more outputs even also if we talk about hr they are as you know the hr people always involved with salaries fixes of salaries they are finding out how to use this you know how to how much salaries to give to you know already given to the uh, employees as by the gradations and always they will be trying how to giving less salary how to get more benefit though there is some provisions there is some law there is some policy of the nations but always they are focused to be with less expenditure how to achieve more giving less salary how to get more then some of the scopes i have uh, kept there i come to objective the objective we already have told you always always uh, always the objective function express in the form of two ways either to maximize or to minimize it and what to be maximized again have let me repeat it always production sales revenue profit etc these are the things where you can think of maximizing it for example of your cost but you can talk about time you can talk about like you know expenditures these are the cases where you can think of to minimize it when you cannot go for more expenditure if you go for more expenditure the profit is same then it is loss for you so first of all you have to understand the problem so what it is like the steps i have told you identify the problems then step by step the previous slide i have shown you so you let me repeat it to understand it like you know first identification then model then solutions uh, then this solution has to be tested then you can implement it but for the two if you talk about profit you want to achieve more but for this first you should know what is the constraint you have how many constraint you have is always the constraint will give direction how to achieve you cannot avoid the constraints the constraint always will help you and give ideas how can or what are the ways by the profit can be maximized <coughs> Like, if you take one example, you can understand it. Let like one carpenter he is uh, manufacturing chair and table. He knows better what the chair is giving the profit, what the table is giving profit. One end of chair giving how much profit, one end of table giving how much profit. He knows better, and he knows better how much raw material is available to him, and he knows better what the demand in the market. So, all these will be tried. Both has to be produced. both has to manufacture but who is i mean the carpenter has to focus on chair or has to focus on table so he has to take a decision as by the demand so this concept always says uh both has to be produced but how much unit has to be produced that a once form a model then you get a solution then after you can know how much unit of chair and how much unit of table has to be produced by who is the decision maker or uh, who is solving the problem so he can know better the profit maximum profit so because each constraint has to be defined through a variables decision variables like if i talk about one example production lead the objective is has to produce more for this the constraint can be manpower the constraint can be raw material the constraint can be uh, machinery let me i am taking three example so these are the these are the three constraint which are 
taking as a three decision variables. The objective has to be produce more, but it depending on the manpower you have, the machine you have, and the you know, raw material you have, even also the money you have. That you should know. Because this war concept also used in production operation management, also the subject like operation management, this war concept is used. Now coming to the next uh, assumptions of LPP. Because as I said, uh, this LPP, the one part of the war. Like LPP also, we have some other you know, chapters or other things are there. One is NLPP, non-linear program problems. One is integer program problems. One is uh, dynamic problems, Markov process. It will have some grief about this. Like if you talk about a decision theory, which I have a focus because I said in the beginning uh, slides, always this one will help you take a decisions. In decision theory, always you will have you know, four types of environment. There are four environment exists, let me tell you. Because you, you know, introduction classes, you should know what things are there in war. So there is a concept called that is called decision environment, where we have a four types of environment exist. One is called decision under certainty, one is decision under uncertainty, one is decision under risk, one is decision under conflict. If you talk about first one, decision under certainties, where all will be expecting a unique outcome, unique, single outcome. What outcome I am getting, you will be getting the same outcome, you cannot, uh, you cannot divert out of, I mean, from this outcome. The result will be unique, the outcome will be always one. Why? Because the data which are available, which are available for taking decisions, it is open for all. It is quite known for all. That is why what result I am getting, we will be getting several results. Similarly, if you talk about the second one, uncertainty, where the data is, data is not available, very rare data available. If available, very rare, very few data, where by a different mathematician, they are using by their own different techniques. So in uncertainty, always the outcome is different. And for example, one is Laplace, one of the mathematician. What result he will be getting by, or by his technique, for, you are adapting the, his technique, what result he will be getting, if you use another technique, let one is Hurry's criterion, the result will be different. Let one is Savage's criterion, the result will be different. So the different criteria, the outcomes are different. Whereas in certain cases, the result always will be unique. That is why some of the example comes under this R. Linear programming problems like transportation problem, mass element problems, shipping, which comes under scheduling, where the data are more accurate. No chance of, I mean, uh, in certain cases, always the data is unique. Sorry, the outcome is unique. Or in case of uncertainty, always the outcomes vary from one technique to other technique. Sometimes it may be shared, but there is no surety, I mean, the surety that it will be shared. Now coming to third one, as I said there are four, one is decision under certainty, one is decision under uncertainty, one is decision under risk, one is decision under conflict. So I have told you certainty, I have told you uncertainties. Now coming to third one, decision under risk, you know when the risk term is coming to mind, always the provided concept we have to ask. Because in that case, we will have so many more techniques like one is called EAB, expected monetary values, one is EOL, expected opportunity loss, one you have EBPI, expected value with perfect information, one is expected profit with perfect information, that is EPPI, EPPI, expected profit with perfect information. But many more techniques are there, but out of that, there are two important techniques you are adopting, one is EAB, expected monetary values, were always you expecting monetary value means what profit? So when the money you are expecting, always you expecting more. Again, that comes from war means 
So what is giving ideas how to have more benefit, how to have more money, expected monetary values. It has you know how to solve it. I will tell you later on. There is another technique called UOL, expected opportunity loss. Why oh, I am saying this? There are some of the examples which comes under this. UOL talks about always if any loss is happening to you, how it can be minimized. Expected opportunity loss. You are you know better that loss will happen, but the how it can be minimized. How the expected loss can be minimized? This our concern with your ideas. The last is decision under conflict. Now, if you see uh, where the conflict starts, when the data are pure now, not available, like you know, partial certainties, some data available, but some data not available. In case of uncertainty, data is purely not available. Right. Whereas in case of partial uh, certainty or the partial uncertainty, you can talk about that comes under decision under conflict. If you talk about example like what is game theory, that is there in the last block. I tell you how the game theory problems or game problem can be solved. How the player values are taken like this. I will tell you in detail. So here what happened when there is a game no conflict. Or any uh, when some hidden contract are there, hidden things are there with the parties, then conflict starts. Whether it can be families or it can be business situations or any situations. Why this conflict arises? Because some data, both the player or both the party, they are keeping as a hidden. They are not making it transparent. Whereas in case of certainty, is why the outcome is unique because all this data or linking data or not any data that is. Purely available to all, clearly available to all. That is why you are able to have the same outcomes, which cannot vary. Back to linear, uh, like linear programming in detail, I will tell you where you have some concept like assignment problems, we have concept like transpression problems, you know, <coughs> and uh, we have concept like uh, routing problems, you know. Where we will see, for example, if we talk about assignment problems, so we will be looking how to assign the task to different machinery or to different people, so employees. How they will cover it with the less duration. Like if you talk about duration, let the question give them durations, we will be thinking how with the less duration they can cover it. If the question is giving profit, we will thinking, we'll be thinking how they can cover it. No? Uh, by you know, using all to have more profit. So it depends what the situation it is. So if you talk about transpersonal problems, <clears throat> always you will be looking how with a less transpersonal cost you can achieve your objective. Where different techniques are there that will help you to achieve the less transpersonal cost. They talk about assignment problem, you talk about transpersonal problem, both are coming in the LPP. And usually assignment problems comes under transpersonal problems. Transpersonal problems comes under linear program problems. Where you are able to derive all the equations in the form of linear, linear equations. We will discuss in the maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow class will discuss. We will you know, we'll discuss this uh, linear program concept. So coming to uh, before coming to this uh, linear problem problem in the next class, let us have idea about basic assumption of LPP. With the assumption of LPP, we have some like five assumptions. One is proportionality, we have additivity, we have continuity, we have sorry, certainty, and we have finite choices. So first is proportionalities. What it says? But the basic assumption underlying the linear program is that any changes in the constraint inequality will have the proportional change in the objective functions. Which means if the product contributes rupees 20 towards the profit, then the total contribution will be equal to 20 x1, whereas x1 is the number of unit of the product. Let one of the product you are producing that is name is x1. 
x1 is the number of unit of the product let you know like uh, let you are producing two product one is a one is b what is x1 let x1 is the number of unit of the product a1 you are producing let one <coughs> one of the one unit of product a if it is giving profit 20 rupees and you are producing x1 number of unit so what is the profit at 20 h1 Similarly, you can add order line. Let there be another product B. If you are producing X2 number of unit, if one unit of product B is giving the profit, let it be scale. And you are defining the product unit product of this B as X2, that will be 10X2. So let's have this example you can understand better. If there are five unit of the product, then the contribution would be rupees 100. And the case of 10 unit, it will be 200. Like as I said before, the product contribute rupees 20 towards the profit. But if you are producing 5 unit, what is the contribution? The 20 to 5 is 100. And if you are contributing 10 unit, it will be 10 in 20 is 200. If the output is double, then the profit will be double. Right? If you are able to sell, see, 1 unit giving 20, uh, 20 rupees profit. If you are going to sell 5 units, obviously the profit is 100 rupees. So what it says, proportionality is, when the output, number of out, unit, output unit changes, the property also changes, which is called proportionality, direct proportional. If the number of decreases, then the profit decreases. So here the dependent variable depends on the, I mean the profit is a dependent variable, it depends on the output. If the outputs are more, the profit will go. That is why the concept is called proportionality. Now coming to additivity, because when you are any, any manufacturer you talk about or any uh, person you talk about always, they believe on or they always think of how to get profit from variety product. We can see many more examples, but big big companies like Tata, you talk about Lance, or talk about any more companies, big big companies, they have many more product units. They never depend on one sectors. They always invest in different sectors because different sector will give you different profits. Because big company, if they're focusing on one sector, always the profit will raise. If one sector is giving less profit, that another sector will give more profit, the profit will be adjusted. So the additive concept says the total profit of the objective function, see, I will tell you in the next class. Always will have a three steps in linear program problems. One is objective function, one is subjected to constraint, one is non-negative constraint. The objective function always the object will be highlighted in the form of function. The form of function means what? Mathematically, if you talk about always you believe y is equal to f of x, y is equal to f within bracket x. What does it mean? Y is the dependent variable. X is the independent variables. So whatever change of x happening, that affect to y. So y is purely depend on x. But when number of independent variables are keeping, they are putting in the form of function, so y is equal to f of x. So the assumption of additivity asserts that the total profit of the object function is determined by some of the profit contributed by each product separately. Just I was giving the example of carpenter. Carpenter lady is producing two types of product. One is chair and double, as I said earlier. So here, his total profit is generated both from table as well as from chair. Because he knows better which one is giving more profit. Like this, it is producing. And he knows better which product has more demand. Similarly, when you are, uh, let you are the Manufacturer, you are asking different raw material from different supplier. So you know better which supplier taking how much or how much they are charging from for their units. Because always being a good manufacturer, always you have to keep with you more supplier. Why? Because you will go for nearby supplier, you will keep some supplier which is far away from your unit. Because it any problem happen with any supplier that can be addressed by the other suppliers 
and the charges from different suppliers are different. But the manufacturer even you need or the manufacturer always keep in link or keep in touch with more more than one supplier. Why? And to avoid the uh, disruption in production. Like we talk about production, like suddenly raw material, you no, know, deficit happens. That happen and that affect to your production process. So to avoid this, always will be looking more suppliers, more than one suppliers. We cannot get on one suppliers. So anyway, the additive says always the total profit. Always, you know, uh, how to calculate it? That is the sum of the profit from the different products. Let, for example, one. Uh, Again, the example of carpet you can take. It is producing chair, table, and let bench, let other sofa, something like that. So he is thinking of profit out of all. When all the profit you are integrating or you are adding it, then some of the profit is calculated, which will be highlighted in the object functions. The always the object function will be highlighted in the form of either max or the form of mean. Which I will be showing in the next class. Always we are writing a z, z max z or mean z, and where to take max z? I think I have told you in detail. Production, sales, revenue. In that cases, the objective function always expands the form of maximum, whereas the cost, time, and your uh, expenditure are giving some doses to the patients. What will be thinking? How it can minimize because let one patient is suffering one disease, so you cannot give more doses. Give more doses, of course, he will die. So we will be trying to give less doses by which he can uh, recover from his disease. Now coming to next one, next assumption that is continuity. Is another assumption of linear programming which talks about the decision variable always continuous. They are not fixed. This means a combination of output can be used with a fractional value along with integers. But sometimes you have some real values, sometimes of a fractional values. And for example, we are talking about durations. The duration can be two hours, it can be two point five hours. In case of labor, it will be real values, I mean integer values. But in case of time, here it will be fraction. So both has to be taken. So the meaning of continuous says continuities are there in the Decision variables. And one example I have shown there. If you talk about five uh, to the power two by three units of product A and ten to the power one by three units of product B to be produced in a week, in this case the fractional amount of production will be taken as a work in progress. I mean the remaining part will go to the next uh, next uh, portion. The integer value will be calculated with the duration, so remaining portion will go to the next uh, process, and the remaining production part is taken in the following week. Therefore, a production of 70 unit of product A and 31 unit of product B over a three-week period implies 5 to the power 2 by 3 units of product A and 10 to the 1 by 3 units of product B per week. And the next assumption is certain T. The another underlying assumption of linear programming certainty is that is the parameters of objective function coefficients and the coefficient of constant inequality is known with certainty. Is like when you are, as I said by the previous example, let the carpenter is getting profit from chair is ten rupees, getting twenty from table, one of table. Then you are expressing this linear function in this way: max z is equal to ten x one plus twenty x two. The ten or twenty, these are coefficient. This is a cost. Though it is profit, but we are expressing the form of cost functions. So ten x one plus twenty x two. The parameter of the objective function coefficient and the coefficient of the constraint inequality is known with certainty. So it cannot be uncertain unless you don't know what is the profit of from each unit of product. Then you cannot form any equations. But to form any equations, you should know. The coefficient of each variables. Let one, you know, the manufacturer is producing five product. Then for each product, if it talk about profit, so each unit profit should be known to him 
Bahir she can put in the equations. So it can be you know like multi uh, it can be multi linear equations, but the coefficient should be known to the decision maker. Thank you. Next class we'll see. Are there any questions?